This is Professor Stan Zygmunt of the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Valparaiso University. And I'm going to show you in this video how to set up a calculation using VASP on our computational materials cluster, and then how to actually run VASP and look at some of the output that you get. So I am logged in to our computational cluster, which is called Lighten. And I'm not in my home directory. I'm in my data directory. And you can see here at the bottom, if I type PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory in Linux, it shows me that I'm in the home data S Zygmunt directory. And each of you, if you're a user on the cluster, has your own directory like this. And so I've got many subdirectories, but I've created one called test underscore H2O, because I'm going to do a calculation on the water molecule. And if I type ls minus l, it shows me all the files that are in this directory, most of which are ready to go to run VASP. However, when you run a VASP calculation, you have four input files, in-car, k-points, post-car, and then pot-car. And the pot-car file is assembled from individual pot-car files for each of the unique atoms that is in the molecule or system that you're studying. So you will be able to obtain, or your research advisor will provide for you, the pot car files for the atoms that are in your molecule or system. And I want to show you how you put them together so that you have a single pot car file for the entire molecule or system. So I, here you can see I've got a pot car file for hydrogen and a pot car file for oxygen. And these represent the potential energy that the electrons in these atoms experience due to other electrons and the nucleus. So what do I want to do? Well, first, I just have to be sure that I'm going to put these together into the pot car file in the correct order. And so for just a second, I will look at the post car file, more post car. And I've set this up as a water molecule. The atoms appear in the order where the hydrogen atom comes first, and there's two hydrogens. And then the oxygen atom comes next, and there's one oxygen. And we have the Cartesian coordinates here at the bottom. So the first two atoms are the hydrogen atoms. And this is very important. In the pot car file, the order has to be the same. So if I take a look at these again, I'm going to use the cat command, which is short for concatenate. So you type cat pot car underscore H, because that's my first atom. And then pot car underscore O, that's my second atom. And then I use the right arrow and type pot car. So what this command is going to do is it's going to take the contents of these two files, put them together, and write them into a single file that I'm calling pot car. And that's what uh, VASP expects to see. So now I should have a single pot car file. If I more that pot car file, at the very top, you can see the label H for hydrogen, just confirming that the hydrogen atom comes first. And this PBE string, if I search for it again using slash PBE, I'll see it again later on in the file uh, in the, the title section for the next atom, which is oxygen. So everything looks fine. And now I'll just break out of that pot car file. Now we're ready to run. But before I do, I want to show you uh, something about the uh, in-car file. The in-car file has input information that's going to tell VASP uh, particular settings for doing this calculation. And I don't want to go through all of these, uh, but several of them I've put comments on the same line uh, just to make a couple of points. So the I spin uh, variable here, the setting, it's either going to be 1 or 2. If you have a molecule like water, where all of the electrons are paired up, and so there, there are not any unpaired spins, we're going to use 1 for a non-spin polarized calculation. 2 we would use if we have a system where there's at least one electron that's not paired up with other electrons. Then if we go down just a little bit further, there are a couple of cutoff values here. E diff is the uh, convergence level for energies in the VASP calculation. So I've set this to 1 times 10 to the minus 6, 1 e minus 6. And that's a good one to use so that the energies in the uh, calculation will be converged to uh, 1 part in 10 to the 6. 
then uh, if you're going to use van der Waals corrections, and we might do that in some of our calculations, uh, this might be set to true, but right now it's set to false. There's also a setting for the maximum force that any atom can experience uh, so that the forces have to be below this level if we want to optimize the position of all the atoms and find the equilibrium structure of the system. And so uh, the default value is 3 times 10 to the minus 2. And I've lowered this to 1 times 10 to the minus 2 in these units of electron volts per angstrom. Uh, because I, I prefer that. It's going to give a uh, better converged equilibrium structure. Finally, there's a parameter called sigma, which is the value of Boltzmann's constant times the temperature for the purpose of occupying the electronic energy levels. And I've set this to 0 0.05 electron volts. Uh, that might need to be different for some systems, particularly if you have metal atoms involved. But for something simple like water, 0 0.05 is just fine. So. Once you've edited uh, the in-car file, and of course, once again, if we look at the post-car file, that contains the positions, the coordinates for all of the uh, atoms that are in the system, as well as the vectors for the unit cell that the system is, uh, is within, then we're ready to run the calculation. So how, does, how is this done? Well, there's one more file that you need that's not really an input file, but it's an executable file that runs the, the calculation that initiates running VASP, and that's VASP.sh. So let me just moor that file here and mention one or two things about features of this file. At the very top on this line that has MPICH, four is the number of processors that I'm requesting that this calculation run on. Uh, and then down here, there's something called specify worker nodes. This is if I want to specify a particular compute node to run the calculation on. And you can comment this line out if you don't want to do that by putting another pound sign at the beginning of that line. But right now, it is set to run the calculation on compute node 0-8. So that's what I'm going to do. And in order to run the calculation, we use a command called qsub. And you type qsub, which submits the job to the queue. And the executable file VASP.sh is what comes after that. And then I just hit Enter. <clears throat> so it tells me the job has been submitted. And immediately, I'm going to use the qstat minus f command to take a look at the entire queue to see up. Oh, and I can see right away my job, right down here at the bottom, has already been submitted to compute node 08. And it's running. R is the status for running you can see that four of the 12 processors are being used for the calculation. So now if I type ls minus l, I've got a bunch more new files that have been set up because uh, they will be written to, they are created when the calculation is actually running. And the most important of the output files is one called outcar. So if I more that file, you can use less as well. But even while the calculation is running, we can look at this. And we can see all kinds of information that's written to this file, uh, much of which we really don't care about. And so what I want to do is show you how you can go through this file without having to, to go through it page by page to see uh, where the calculation is in the execution and whether the results are making sense. So I'm just going to control C out of this. And I'm going to show you how to use what's called the grep command in Linux to search for a particular string within this outcar file. So I type grep space sigma and then outcar. What does this do? This is going to look for the text string sigma within the outcar file and print out for me on the screen all of the lines that have that. All right, so <clears throat> this is what I get. I get a whole bunch of lines that all end with some kind of energy value. And this is the energy for all of the atoms that make up the molecule. And what you'll see is that after a few initial uh, energy values that, that change quite a bit, it settles down to a value that is fairly stable. And you can see that this value settles down to negative 13.8 something. Remember that a negative energy is what we expect to have for a bound system. Uh, the zero value of energy would mean that all the atoms are infinitely far apart. So when they stick together in a bound structure, that value of the energy will be negative, And this is in electron volts. 
So what happens is uh, the iterative process that is used to solve the quantum mechanical equations for the motion of the electrons in this molecule is an iterative uh, algorithm. And when the energy converges to whatever the preset tolerance is that I used, then it stops. And uh, then we say that that particular iteration of the calculation is converged. The solution of the quantum mechanical equations is converged. So you'll see here that down near the very bottom, uh, the energy is the same out to six decimal places. And that was the E diff uh, uh, value that I put into my NCAR file. But then you'll see right at the very bottom, there's one line that has an extra space in it where it says energy without entropy. And that's what VASP uses in this outcar file to say, all right, we've finished one complete uh, iteration of the calculation. And so if I now use the up arrow to grep the sigma command, uh, the sigma string in the outcar file again, I see that I've got a whole bunch more than I had before. And in fact, it, it scrolls off to the next screen. So what I want to do with this grep command, if I want to see the output one screen at a time, is I'm going to type Greg's grep sigma out car, and then a vertical bar, which is called a pipe, and then more. What this does is it takes the output from the grep command and then use, uses the more command to look through it just one page at a time. So here I've got the what I saw before, which was all these energies, negative 13.8 something, right? It reaches. Uh, uh, it finishes that iteration, and then what happens is VASP calculates the forces on all the atoms. It moves those atoms just a tiny distance in the direction of all those forces and repeats the calculation again. And so now you can see it's reached a lower energy. Now we're at negative 14.1 something, and then it converges down here to negative 14.159 something, right? Out to six decimal places, it's converged. Calculation stops, the forces are recalculated, the atoms are moved, and now we have a new geometry to work on. And so I'm just going to hit one, the Enter key and go through this one line at a time. We can see progressively that in each one of these optimization steps, the energy is getting lower and lower. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the equilibrium structure, which is where that energy will be a minimum, a local minimum. And so after several of these optimization steps, that's exactly what happens. And in fact, the calculation, I believe, is finished because if I go back to use the qstat command, qstat minus f, my job is no longer listed there. And in fact, on node 08, there is a load that's indicated, but you can see none of the processors is actively being used. And the reason the load average doesn't say 0 is because that load average is an average over a certain period of time. And so if I type the qstat command again, I'll see that that number, uh, if I wait long enough, that number will go down. And eventually, after a few minutes, this number will become 0 again. And that, again, indicating that nothing's running. Now you see that it's down to 3.0. And once again, if I wait a little bit, then I will see um, that, that value tail off towards 0. So. What's the result of my calculation? I've got a whole bunch of different output files. The most important one is the out car file, the charge and the charge car file, and the wave car file down near the bottom. Those are all important because they contain information about the electron wave functions and about the charge distribution of the electrons in this molecule. Kantkar is another important file. What Kantkar does, it contains the positions of all the atoms and that gets written to after every one of the optimization steps. That's helpful because if for some reason your calculation terminates abnormally, if it crashes, if the computer system goes down for some reason, that CONTCAR file will have the most recent geometry of the atoms that are in your system. And so you could restart the calculation using that as the coordinates for the atoms. And you wouldn't lose all of the work that VASP has done up until that point. So that's very helpful uh, to know about. So just summarizing what we've done, we've showed uh, what the input files need to be for VASP, in particular the pot car, the post car, and the in car files. And we've very 
briefly uh, gone through some of the important output that's in the outcar file. There's a lot more in the outcar file, but using the grep sigma command, that is often something that will give us the most information uh, that, that we need. Now, there's one more thing I'll show you. If you more the outcar file directly and you look for, uh, there's a string that will help me optimized. Let's see, is that what I'm looking for? Uh, there is, oh, down near the bottom of this file. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can remember what it is. If we go all the way down, what I'm doing now is I've searched for the string called iteration. And, uh, and you can see that this is iteration 3, step 9. And as I keep going down through this, the iteration number increases. And the step number is the number of steps within that iteration that it takes to actually get the energy of the system converged. And at some point, what will happen I believe that the eighth iteration was my last one. And at some point, what will happen, and we'll see this at the end of the file, is that the job is finished. Required, reached required accuracy, uh, stopping structural energy minimization. And so this means that the calculation uh, has found the equilibrium structure to within the desired force tolerance. And you can, you can see whether you're at this point, whether the calculation has actually finished by, uh, I think you can just look for this string required. So let me try that again to make sure. If I moor the outcar file and put slash required, right, then it goes to this point in the calculation. And if you see this message in your outcar file, you know it's finished. And at the very end of the file, you can see how much time it took, how many CPU minutes or seconds it took. And there's one more thing that you can do uh, in the outcar file. If you search, instead of more, if you use the grep command and search for the string forces in the outcar file, it'll show you in each of the eight iterations what the maximum force on any atom was and what the root mean square of all the forces on the different atoms happens to be. So that's when it says forces max atom and RMS. And what you'll notice is at the very, very last iteration, both of those forces fall below 0.01. In the previous iteration, they were both 0.01. One of them was 0.015. The other was 0.014. And I had set in the in-car file the value of 1e minus 2, right? 0.01 which means that these forces have to fall below that level for the calculation to be considered finished. And right here you can see that they do. Okay, so that's enough for now. Hopefully this will help you get started running VASP calculations, maybe for the first time, and we'll have some more videos uh, to give, uh, in the next video especially, we'll show how to take the coordinate information from the outcar file and use that to be able to visualize the structure of the molecule so we can see the different steps that it went through on its way to being a fully optimized calculation. Hope this helps. Have a nice day.